All right, so we have um, Trevino. Are you there, brother? Yeah, I'm here. Nice. So um, Trevino brings plenty. Um, what can I say? Um, I just want to share a quick memory of hanging out with Trevino one time in Portland. And um, he took me to this donut place. And um, I remember there was like a long line and you know, um, Trevino was really um, um, what was the what was the donut place called again? Was it Voodoo? Probably, uh, yeah, it was probably Voodoo. Yeah, but I had this like gnarly like donut with like I think it was like there was like a Snickers on top of it with like <laughs> caramel and marshmallows or whatever. It was pretty gnarly. It was really good. Anyway, so Trevino. Um, yeah, let's do this. All right. Yeah, the Voodoo, well, people come to Portland always get a dozen um, donuts from Voodoo Donuts. I mean, they're not like, they're, door, they're just donuts, but the marketing is interesting. Uh, they did have one donut that was uh, Pepto-Bismo flavored, um, <clears throat> but they had to discontinue that because it's, uh, you know, it's medicine, so... Uh, that, that makes sense but yeah they're always trying new things there and you know portland's a uh has a lot of interest, interesting stuff going on and uh you know on the conspiracy theory side of it i guess they got caught up in the pizzagate stuff um when it was first coming out um but yeah it's it's there's something going on in portland that it, it puts itself into the national narrative and you know there's a a politician, native politician that uh, works in DC came back um, to Portland and was talking with some of those students at Portland State. Um, and he mentioned that, you know, uh, everyone on the East Coast looks to the West Coast and like Oregon specifically to see what kind of trends are gonna happen across the nation. So that'd be, it's pretty interesting to think about um, what, what potential influence uh, Portland may have on the national conversation and politics or whatever it may be. Uh, but I, I was thinking about opening it up with, um, so I came across this uh, little comic, um, which I didn't really, you know, it's funny, um, but uh, I thought it could be more. And that was, you know, so like the opening panel, uh, two native dudes, um, elder chief and a younger person Young Buck, I guess. Uh, Elder says, my son, if you are to replace me as tribe leader one day, you must go on a vision quest. Panel two, they're looking out into the desert area, um, wilderness. Uh, Elder says, journey into the hills, return only when you have found your sacred animal, your sacred spirit animal. And so go down to, down to panel three. Uh, the young native sees their spirit animal. It's a furry with a collar. And the young guy came back to the chief and said, I cannot lead this tribe. You know, I, I thought it was, it was funny to, you know, insert the, the furry as a spirit animal, but I didn't really like, uh, I didn't like how it ended up um, being more negative than, you know, actually the furry community is. Um, so I went in there and did my little remix on it. So it, uh, you know, starts off the same, uh, my son, if you're, you know, go out there, if you're going to be a tribal leader, go out and have a vision quest. Um, they continue forward and panel three, you know, the, the vision quest there. And then the young native person comes back and says, I'm fucking ready for this shit. So, Yeah. And I didn't notice, but it looked like the 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 character has a little boner. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up. Uh, I just realized that, like, <laughs> before I was pulling up the panels right now, I'm like, "Whoa, it, wow!" See, my mind my mind was like focused on the joke, the text, and then I looked at the image, like, "All right, yeah." That's kind of that's the kind of attitude we should have going forward in in the world. Like I'm fucking ready for this shit. 
I mean, the, there's also a Lakota saying that says, I'm ready, and that indicates like, yeah, you, you've done all the things to prepare. And um, yeah, so for me, that's how I in, interjected the Lakota narrative in, in English translation. Um, but one thing I wanted to, you know, bring up was um, this one project I, I started. Um, See if I line this up correctly. So, um, 2016, 2015, um, <laughs> let me turn off my messages on my computer. Um, I had this idea, you know, uh, my, my work relies heavily on half-assed jokes. That's how I get my inspiration. That's how I get my ideas. And this was part of that. Like, uh, what if? And then, you know, the inspiration comes afterwards. So I was thinking of what if looking at those uh, photographs, oh, man, I forgot the guy's name, the pretty well-known, famous person who does these native photo photographs. But uh, what if um, took these photographs, you know, uh, black and white, um, you know, the technology at the time in the late 19th century was such that, uh, you know, they had to sit still for a while um, and, and to take the, the photo. But you, you think about that time, that's a very uh, traumatic time for Native folks. And so the background, the, back, the backdrop is um, uh, very yeah, uh, intense. So putting that aside, I wondered what if we took all those stoic images and tweaked them, tweaked them just right. Um, oh, what's going on here? Side? Oh, you're getting a double thing. Uh, I can't see folks here. So I, I took the tweak and ran it through uh, Face App. Made him smile. And so, uh, you know, part of my my half assness is uh um i just went like all right let's let's just grab a bunch you know i get a little a little uh, mania on my like, my concepts so just go and download a bunch of these images and just like running it through face app and see what happens when you have all these images you know i've over the in my development in my um, finance, my uh, foundational understanding of native folks from these images that embed into my mind of these are, are my ancestors. These are uh, folks from um, seven, generations, seven generations back, folks um, so far removed that the, the Stoic Indian um, seemed really unreal to the native folks that I engage with, family members, friends, other native folks, the other indigenous folks. What they we do, we just joke around, laugh, and that's what I wanted to see. And so going through all these photographs and doing this process, I started to change my mental relationship to what these photographs are. Let me double check this. Uh, that's weird. It, it, it does a weird. <laughs> so I switch back over here and, it, you know, there's a, a weird effect that's happening here. Um, that's kind of cool. And yeah, granted, uh, this is like at the time when you know Face App came out, um, the free version um, had a little bit more options to customize. But um, sometimes they, for the most part, they lined up. We had to find the right face at the right angle to make the the, the program work. But like this one, like the three quarter profile, uh, kind of messed up the smile a little bit. Kind of like a Tom Cruise smile. If folks have seen Tom Cruise's. Um, teeth don't really line up um, symmetrically with his face. Uh, this one looks like they have braces. And there's some like distortion artifacts that happen within the compression with the images themselves going from JPEG into this app that's pumped out again. So um, not only the, the quality of the, the, the original photographs from what I downloaded uh, degenerate through the process, um, it went further with that with the face app. Um, compression as part of that. So it becomes, it becomes its own aesthetic. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, uh, I even like the ones that don't really line up that well, like this one right here, where it's just like, you know, I, 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 these are these are some native native dude, uh, this in this case native dudes in, um, you know, teeth, um, the, our relationship to our teeth, you know. Um, I'm, I'm 44 years old and I only lost one tooth so far. It's a molar, um, you know, at, at the time I didn't have money to get it, get it addressed. So, uh, our, our relation to our teeth is such. And so, um, seeing a full set of teeth, dentures or not, is pretty impressive. Um, and you know, it, maybe this might be the, the turning point to see how authentic one is Native American is if they have the curvature in the back of their teeth. You know, because folks have, um, are folks checking their teeth right now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the, what this did, in my processing and engaging it, humanized more so the images. Because, you know, the, the amazing thing with the face app is not only the smile with the mouth, but it also um, tweaks the eyes to make the eyes smile as well. So it does a pretty good um, rendering and transformation. It made me imagine like even thinking like a, a standing rock, even during the intense time of the last the protest in 2016 uh, over the pipelines, we know or at least can imagine a bunch of natives getting together, it, laughter, humor, smiling happened in that intense time. So that was, you know, part of my half-ass ideas, um, you know, I tried to build out some kind of template for how to expand it and do more with it. So my idea was to, to take them and colorize them. Colorify them? Color them. So I started doing that. I didn't, I don't think I colored that one, that one's already colored. And you can, you know, you can tweak the backgrounds. So, star in the background. Chief Joseph here. I was looking at, um, you know, Net, I think, yeah, Ness Pierce, Chief, Chief, Chief Joseph, Chief Joseph is Ness Pierce. And so I was looking at patterns and mimic those, um, textile patterns for backgrounds and then you can you know we are seven we are seven generations of the dankest memes so that was, that's so that's one project Yeah, before folks came on, we were talking about memes and um, some of my meme projects, um, you know, post um, MFA, um, needing a break to reset my mind and really intensify the work I need to do to work on my book, uh, just do memes. And so, you know, to have a, looking at memetics as a, as a, a viable source for uh, writing generation a generative writing pro practice where have an idea, uh, put it through different programs and do layout really quickly and then, you know, distribute through social media, um, social media platforms. You know, the part of that process is also <clears throat> um, getting over the, the, the nervousness of 
publishing, right? You know, there's a fear of sending stuff out, rejection, all that. It's like, you can break that down. Um, especially if you work, say like, a, like, you know, you don't care if what you have created is put out to the world and it's gone, let it go. And, you know, uh, that's a good, a good relationship to have with some of your work instead of being bogged down with the intensity of making it just right. Cause 